Week 17, the final divisional game of the regular season. If we win, we will go 500 with an opportunity to finish the season above 500 in Week 18. A win would also mean revenge after a late game loss with about 15 seconds or so on the clock in the previous matchup against Philly. They're also atop of our division. We could really shake things up, make things interesting for the playoffs that we won't really be a part of if we could topple them. So let's see what happens. And it will be the Eagles kicking things off as we are back to return with Fox. His injuries have kind of been fairly consistent the last uh, handful of games. And with that and just the overall toll of a long season, this will be the final game with the starters as Borgie will start us off trying to break to the outside. He hasn't had a long run this season for a touchdown, but he might have one here. No, down to the six, but a heck of a way to start with a 64 yard rush. So close yet so far, but yes, this will be the final game with the regular starters as we'll go with a swing pass to the outside Fox. Not going to quite get there. Nice recovery speed there by Maddox, I believe. We'll bring out our short yarded specialist here with Turban. We do have Jordan Davis in the middle, who can be a problem as he bulldozes our center. Be a loss of two. So on third and goal, we'll go spread. We'll take Jordan Davis just off the field entirely. Try to find someone to get open. There's not much crossbody throw in. Fox will complete it very similarly to how the Eagles finished off the previous matchup with a late throw across the middle for a touchdown. That's how we start our day. A nice, accurate pass from Hertz. Or not from Hertz, that's their guy, from Tyler Huntley. Something we didn't see a lot of last week. But of course, Huntley needs to impress in this final game because his job is on the line come the off season with that potential quarterback we could draft as they get a handoff right down the middle. Big hit there from Reed, but a first down for Sanders. Wasn't as big of a uh, rush as our first one was, but still impressive. As they will get him up to the 38, we bring the blitz here. They go right back to him and he'll get another handful. The Eagles, of course, very aware of our situation on the interior in the nickel. We don't have a lot of run stoppers there. Potaway has been a really good pass rusher as Shaka Tony says, I need another. He's got to be close to at least matching, maybe even topping what he did in his uh, season last year where he had 19 and a half. Amadi doesn't have to do anything here as that pass leads him out of bounds. But the defense does their job and forces the punt. So our offense, after taking a lead early, is right back out there. Huntley going to look to scramble here. We'll get about seven. Slide down. The quarterback in the upcoming class should have both a solid arm as well as some running ability. So Huntley, who's that's his primary thing, is going to have to show that he could be accurate. Last week wasn't very good in him trying to show that as... We ended up having to play all three quarterbacks at various different parts as his stamina became a big problem. As we go, Bo Melton here, sideline grab. They say he was in. We might have a second look, but as it stands currently, heck of a play. But as I thought, Philly is going to challenge, so we will take one more look. Bo Melton towards the sideline. I don't even think he got one foot in there. Was a great job of stretching out for it, but that first foot, I'm pretty sure the toes landed out of bounds, definitely didn't even get the second foot close. But it was a pretty nicely placed ball from Huntley. Now, do we go with the handoff? Yes, we will. Borgie will get maybe a yard. Clearly not as of impressive of a play as the previous, even though it ended up getting called back. We'll go with a jet sweep here with Borgie, trying to break to the outside. Linebacker takes a good angle, but the second effort from Borgie, you just have to love it. Just continues to be the one player every time on offense we don't have to worry about. 
Maybe set up a read option here. Go with the pass. Try to get to the outside with the blocker. Simi Fehoko down the sideline. Tiptoeing and will get caught up out at the 35. Now, there was something they did a little bit at Stanford during Simi Fehoko's time, more so after his time. But he has some famil familiarity with it as Alton Campbell. Can he catch up to this one? No. Unfortunate as he did have the linebacker beat, but just a little too much under it for Huntley. We'll stick with the same formation, but just hand this one off. Turban will cut right and we'll get a solid gain, about six out of it. Now on third and four, Simi Fehoko out to the left-hand side. Some more RPO. We have some lead blockers, but that could have been really bad. Luckily, the defender definitely got there early. So just a slightly too aggressive play will give us a free first down. Now let's see if we can get Ross to the back of the end zone here. We actually have our guy Fox down the seam. And that's another one for one of our really top guys. The slot has been, I think, our best spot at receiver with Manny Fox and Bo Melton. Now similarly to that first Eagles game, they find themselves down two possessions here. Can they answer back quickly? A nice stop there by Naquan Jones, I believe is his first name. It's been him and Hinton on the inside in the more rush traditional formations. As Shaka Tony off the edge here, in pursuit will bring down Hurts. Couldn't quite scramble away quick enough. Now, not that I expect it to happen, but if we can grow a solid lead in this game, I wouldn't even be opposed to getting some of the uh, younger guys out earlier than, well, next game as Hurts. Looking to scramble here, Monty Rice will force a slide after a bad angle. Will be another punt. But that'll happen after the switch from first quarter to second. And after a pretty solid return by Manny Fox, who is breathing a little heavy out there, so he'll probably get subbed out with Bolt Melton fairly shortly. Hand this one off down the middle, Borgi. A great run, seven yards on first down. Only three carries on the day, but 73 yards after that massive first down run, or first play of the game even. Hand this one off here, he'll cut down the middle. Keeps fighting for yards when there really shouldn't be much there for him. And with us going to him two straight plays, they will bite on him on third down as we get Huntley to the outside. We'll get away from any tacklers, even though there was a late attempt there. Luckily, no contact made. And indeed, Bo Melton is in at that slot on the left side. We're going to send him down the sideline here. See if he could get by the defense. He does have them beat. Huntley puts that pass too far inside and too far downfield. Just about every time Huntley has to drop a pass in, the accuracy is off. If the receiver is wide open, he could put it on him no problem. Which, for us, is a problem as Borgie ends up slowing down Fox here on the jet sweep. Will be a loss of two. So on third and long, we'll bring out a bunch to this left-hand side of Simi Fehoko on kind of a deep off-kiltered in. The best way I can kind of describe it. We do have Alton... Going deep here, we'll toss it up to him, and he can't quite make the catch there on Slay. First possession of offense that does not end in points. Can the Eagles capitalize? They come out with a heavy set, go with a run to that right-hand side, and actually get a lot more out of that than they should. And we've been talking a lot about the draft at the end of all of these games. So if you guys haven't stuck around, you probably haven't seen those. So do stick around to the end so you could see the upcoming draft class. But I would like to know who you guys would like to focus on. What position group we should focus on at the end of next episode. We've done a lot of them. D-line has boats away in with a sack. Monty Rice injured. A bit of sweet and sour on that play as Gemmel will check in for him. And that's who would have come in next episode or possibly even later this episode, depending how the rest of the game goes. He did start for us last year, comes in, makes the hit. But yeah, I would like to know uh, wh who, you, what position group we should focus on. Haven't done corners or safeties yet. Haven't done receivers. We've talked about the offensive line, the D-line. Talked about quarterbacks. So not a whole lot to go. We could probably do cornerbacks and uh, safeties in the same go. Just DBs in general. So, yeah, let, let, us, let me know who we'd like to see. There are still running backs. We haven't looked at that group either. 
Now we have gotten an update though on Monty Rice. It is a bruised sternum. He will not be returning in this game. So we will see Gemmel as a pass rushes in. Shaka Tony has three in the first half. He's just been a monster for us this entire series. And hopefully we'll see that continue on as it is going to be a pass play here. And a fourth sack. Shaka Tony forces the fumble scooped up by Sanders. Guy is just on fire. Tried to look up the record for the most first half sacks and couldn't find anything. Just full game sacks as Borgie will start us off here. So let me know in the comments section if you know what that record is because four is very impressive. We also gain four on the first down rush. Second and six, stick with that same formation. We're gonna toss this one out to Fox. Try to get the juke. You know, he has the playmaker archetype, but I just don't feel like he gets a lot of good jukes or spin moves on players. He will break some sack, or break, break some tackles, but open field moves hasn't really been his forte as we're going to find justin ross here on the delayed slant headed down the sideline tiptoeing and we'll step out at the 16. and we'll see if we could cap it off with a hat trick perhaps on this jet sweep have some lead blockers tried to again cut to the outside there just a bit late will be only a gain of one and a player we haven't seen get into the end zone in a while is campbell over on the left hand side but i also really like the route for Bo Melton going towards that back pylon ended up kind of getting some space but Riddick in pursuit tried to throw it away but it never quite left our hand will be a sack third and 19 and you know I really like the play design so we're gonna go right back to it see if someone could get open they're flooding in rolling out late we'll throw it late and I don't think Alton Campbell ever knew that ball came out nor was it accurately thrown so we'll instead send out the field goal team, putting us up, hopefully, 17 to zero before half. And that's indeed what happens. And from there, we'll just go ahead and head on into half. A really dominant display from the from us, surprisingly, but not also surprising. We've played really well against the Eagles in the past, and we're doing so again at prime time. No games to update on here. So straight back into it we go. Eagles, they played a lot better in the second half of the first matchup. Will they do so again here? I'm also considering just going ahead and putting in some of the guys who we haven't seen play much yet. I think I'll give the defense one more go with the normal starters and then we'll make some changes there. Offense, I'm thinking possibly the same as there's almost a great play. Instead, that one's popped free. I believe that was Alan Lazard who that pass was intended for. He's also the one that caught the game winner in the previous matchup. Bring the blitz here and no sack. Instead, AJ Brown gets a catch, makes a few guys miss. Amadi will drag him down just past the midfield line. Only one incompletion on the day for Hertz, but six of seven. They honestly haven't passed a whole lot. Will be a delayed handoff as they, I think that was potentially an RPO. Sanders will get three. Two receivers out to the right as it will be a pass right behind RJ. RJ? Honestly, don't know why I'm forgetting Reed's name. He was one of the uh, first players we decided to bring back as Hertz looking to scramble here. Carter gets juked out and he also gets another broken tackle before sliding down in front of Amadi. This is exactly what I was talking about from the first game. Second half, they came out as almost an entirely different team, one that was much harder to stop as that pass off the back of a player, Naquan Jones almost gets the pick. Now a bunch to the left-hand side. Only one catch for both uh, Smith and A.J. Brown as we bring the blitz here. Shaka looking for a fifth, not gonna get there, but Smith will get his second catch and make it third and four at the five. Just need one more stop as we come out with a 46 defense. They go with a pass play and sacked in the middle. I believe that's Hinton, one of the few he's had this season. But that does give the Eagles an opportunity to get on the board still. The first points of the game for them comes in the third quarter, 17 to three. And as mentioned, we'll give the offense one more go with the starters before making some changes. Tosses one back to the other side. 
almost getting away late there was Bo Melton, but a nice tackle there by Bradbury. And I think on the RPO passes, you have to, like, laser arm them in. You can't really add any touch, otherwise they just don't get thrown correctly. But with that fresh set of downs from Borgie, we'll spread empty. Bo Melton in motion. He'll take the jet sweep this time. Breaks one tackle and just tries to get as much out of it as possible, which is about only a yard. But that does bring down the safety on the following play. See if Stoner doesn't really have the speed to get down the sideline. But we will have a couple guys wide open underneath instead. Alton Campbell with the first down. Crossing midfield to about the 45. He was such a... I wouldn't say dominant player for us in the first half of the season, but he got a lot of touchdowns early. With the change of the playbook, haven't really seen him a whole lot since as Hales tries to take the jet sweep. Stiff arm didn't work. Now Turbin checks in at running back for some more RPO. Go the quick slant. Simi Fehoko with the first down grab. Just not prepared for this offense. And the Eagles, at least they used to have a very athletic defense. I feel like in recent years that's changed a little bit while still being very competitive. But of course you would imagine so with them drafting pretty much the uh, national champions every single year. Hand this one off Turbin down the middle. First down gain before getting picked up and slammed down by Edwards. Now how about a little bit of some play action. Simi Fehoko, does he get over the top? No. What happened there? A flag comes down. I feel like we're going to need a replay. All right. On this play, Simi Fehoko is supposed to go deep. He does, but then he goes with a comeback. And then as the ball gets intercepted, he pushes Slay in the back. And he was actually called for block in the back on the play. It's just a mess. So unfortunately that goes as a turnover and actually let's make a quick audible here. I want to bring the double A gap blitz as they are close to the red zone and we will get a tackle in the backfield once again, Shaka Tony. Would really love a safety opportunity, but it looks like we'll be sending this one into the fourth quarter. We are up 17-3. And as the fourth quarter begins, a new defense heads on out with a lot of our backups still have basically the normal starting DTs out there because we really only have four, but only two of them are meant to run stop. So, and only two are meant to rush the passer. So really can't make any changes there. Also Dillard stays out there as a normal starter, but he's switching over to the spot where Shaka Tony normally plays. Everyone else, is a different guy, is the backup as Dillard will get off the edge here and a sack from that side. It's technically the side he should be playing, but there is no way we get Shaka Tony off the field. They both are built the same way, have the same skill set, but we have to go with Shaka Tony. So Dillard has been getting the start instead as we get a stop on fourth down at the three. Tanner Muse in coverage. The offense also has changed. The O-line stays the same because there really, there's really no need to change there. And Huntley will continue to play through this game so we can get a full look with him as the starter as Hales gets a touchdown in the typical Turban fashion. But I'm sure Turban was cheering for his teammate over on the sideline. He's had plenty of those touchdown opportunities. And hopefully he'll have more as the... Uh, Starters will be out, like I said, next episode as we finish off the regular season against the Falcons. This one looking pretty good as we're up currently 24-3, up three possessions. Can't really ask for more as there's a lot of open guys underneath as one of the other linebackers backed off a little too much. Now, one of the guys who really hasn't seen the field at all is Bethel. He's taken over the Dillard spot who switches over where Shaka Tony was playing. Hasn't seen the field a whole lot. Has a little bit more of a balanced skill set in comparison to like Shaka Tony as well as Dillard, who are primarily pass rush guys. Just the total overall really isn't there to be in the starting rotation, but should be a solid backup for at least a couple different roles as they go out wide. Goddard has not really been much of a part of this game and continues to get shut down. We do have a little bit of a throwback to last season with Tanner Muse and Gemmel getting the start, or not the start, but are out there at linebacker. They were the starters for us last year as Tanner Muse comes in, gets the stop as well as Dillard. 
And speaking of more throwbacks to last year, on the outside corner spots, we do have A.J. Parker as well as Trill Williams. Once again, worst starters for us previously as Everson Griffin gets the sack on the intended halfback screen. But they will still go for it here. Down. Three possessions, fourth and 18. As that one is coming up a little short, and Trill Williams also comes up a little short on the interception, but will be a turnover on downs. So we'll get to see a little bit more of Hale's turban. We've seen him play a lot, so I'm not all too focused on him getting out there. So we'll still focus on the other rookie running back. And as mentioned, we are going to keep Huntley out there. Want to just get a, a lot more of an opportunity to see him out there before we make our final decision come the offseason and potentially draft his replacement. He does smartly throw the ball away there, leaving us with third and three. Let's go with that power stretch to the outside with the lead blocker. Cuts in, not going to break the tackle, but we'll get plenty of yardage compared to what we needed. Out at receiver, Dylan is out there. Hasn't really gotten much of an opportunity. Also have Melton and Stoner, and then Rucker the tight end. So we have some guys that we've had some look at. Stoner we had, we've had plenty of looks at. So he's primarily out there just to give the normal starters a bit of a break. As we have a second and 19 here after the sack, Stoner going to go deep, have some underneath routes, going to roll over. We do have a guy, but it's not going to get anywhere close to him. So on third and 19, let's just hand it off to Bo Melton, who I don't believe has had a touchdown today, which would end his streak of four consecutive games with said touchdown. Does break the tackle, but then steps out of bounds. Would have rather he stay inbounds there. So we'll send out Johnson here to go ahead and tack on an extra three points, make it 27 to three, which we do right down the middle. Now this second team defense has been playing honestly just as well as the first. We'll see if they can finish off strong with about a minute 45 left on the clock. Dump this one off for Sanders who goes out of bounds. Now we know that they're going to be passing primarily, so we'll bring an occasional blitz as we bring out the double A gap here. Dillard off the edge, won't get the sack, but Trill Williams will knock it down after the hurry. Two more plays left before a turnover on downs. See if we could get there once again. Across the middle, no Allen. Or not Allen, yeah, Allen, I guess. It's his first name, Allen Lazard gets the first down. Feel like that might be his first catch of the day. Be another pass underneath. It'll be a short one. Sanders immediately dropped as they are in the hurry up. Trips out to the right hand side, sends some guys underneath. They do go all the way underneath. Got it with the catch. Makes a few guys miss. Get them inside the 40. Now just 37 seconds left here on second and nine. Two to the right, one to the left hand side. Will be again another pass. This time they do send Sanders deep. We're having to cover him with Muse. But they will go well underneath and actually caught before getting nearly decapitated by Smith. Or is Smith more aptly so. Looking to at least tack on some points late in this one. Eagles trying to just get a little bit of some, I wouldn't even say momentum, but just salvaging something. As Goddard goes for maybe a loss of one. 21 seconds left after the timeout. Still calling those as they're down a lot in this one. A really solid victory for the team as Diller trying to get the pass rush. Does at least force a scramble. Hackett dives and misses. Does force an errant throw. Maybe about two plays left. Maybe one if we get a tackle inbounds. They do still have one timeout though, so it could still possibly be two as they make an audible here. Send over Smith to that left-hand side. Handing up the halfback screen. They do get it to Sanders. Amadi with the tackle. They do call the timeout. So one more play, most likely. And it will be a trips look to the left. One to the right. Not setting up a screen this time. Have a couple guys underneath. Nice throw. Not a touchdown, though. We could go ahead and kneel this one on out. I believe that was Lazard in the back. Could only get one foot down in bounds. Now Huntley can take a knee. And this game is over. We topple the top of the NFC East. Most likely, unless it was a loss for the Cowboys, putting them back atop. As for us, it gives us a chance in week 18 to finish the season above 500. Offense performed pretty well today. Defense 
fantastic as always. Even the backups played well. We're starting to build, I think, a core group of players on that side that could really build us towards the future. Now, instead of going through player profiles for the draft like we have been doing after the game, I want to bring in a few players for essentially a tryout next episode. And I want to start with Felipe Franks. He has a similar skill set, the scrambler type with 84 speed, but you know, he has something in the passing game, right? 90 throw power, 76 short, 71 medium, 72 deep with 72 throw on the run, 72 throw under pressure. I think he would fit well in the kind of college style offense that we're running. He's also very large as a quarterback. 6'6", 234, kind of reminds me of like a Cam Newton-esque build. So we'll sign him from the Falcons practice squad, which is funny because he's going to be playing against them week 18. At receiver, since we were, we were playing some guys who already have been starters for us, or we've seen a lot, want to see some other guys. So I want to bring in Amir Smith-Marset. He has the speed, has some solid hands, as also a good base for the route running. Release, I don't think, will be necessary for our quick throw game. And he has a lot of after-the-catch ability. So I do want to bring in him. And obviously with bringing in those two guys, we need to make room elsewhere. Now where I already kind of plan on making that room is at the quarterback spot. Matt Ryan, he's not going to be part of our future. Is mostly coming in to kind of just help mentor the quarterbacks. So we will go ahead and cut him prior to the end of the season. He'll probably end up retiring anyway. And I want to send Jack Cohn to the practice squad. I don't think he'll end up getting picked up considering he's a 58 overall. If he does, unfortunate, but he doesn't really have a path to the starting quarterback spot with us having Huntley and potentially drafting another quarterback. He would be strictly backup, and he's been solid with that role. So he'll go to the practice squad. Now we're back to the 53. So Franks will get the start, as I mentioned, against his previous team. I just want to see what he could do. Potentially, he could lead us to our first season above 500. I've been keeping an eye on him for a while, seeing if he gets pulled up to the actual roster or not, and he hasn't figured, like I said, he could fit this style of offense. So we'll give him a go. We'll see if Amir Smith-Marset also fits well. Just want to, you know, get a good look at a couple different opportunities, some guys that we could go ahead and just sign to a future contract before anyone else has the opportunity to later on. So opportunities were taken advantage of at the end of this game, as well as during the game, 27 to three against the Eagles. We will wrap up the regular season next episode. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out. My bear icon on the bottom right, tap it and subscribe, or you can scroll down and actually hit the subscription button, but definitely make sure you go down there to hit the bell icon so you're notified of when these videos go live. This series posted every Monday and Thursday with the state only challenge, currently the Northeast States Challenge, posted every Wednesday and Saturday on FIFA. My player, the noob to pro, or my career, but it's a my player. Yeah, that is posted every Tuesday and Friday. So six videos every week. Make sure you guys subscribe, stick around, enjoy all the content. And until next time, we'll wrap out the season. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye.